Hey everyone, so today I want to talk to you about Byron and I don't know where to start with this, I'm very excited. This was actually a Christmas present I got from my friend Emily, thank you. I didn't know this DVD even existed, never heard of it before and when I, when I unwrapped it and I was like, oh my goodness, what? I did scream very quickly. I was like, ah my goodness, Byron! And I didn't watch it until yesterday. Yesterday's date was the 1st of January. Don't know why it took me that long, I just wasn't really in the mood to watch it, which is bizarre. And this is actually a BBC adaptation. I assume it was televised and it is a 15. Now having watched it, I could say that I'm actually surprised that it's only a 15. I guess because nothing was too overly done, it couldn't really be an 18, a 15 is fine. But it's a lot heavier going than what I thought it was going to be. Um, and it is quite long also, it's 2 hours and 25 minutes I believe, but it's in two parts. So I imagine when it was televised, part 1, um, an hour and 15 minutes was one day, an hour and 20 minutes for the second part or something like that. On the next day I realised the numbers don't quite add up there, but I'm, I'm an English student, I don't do maths. Um, and it is quite bio biographical of Byron's life, taking us through from the point just before he wrote Child Harold. Um, and that only lasts for about 7 minutes, he's in um, the Turkish Greece for like the first seven minutes of the film, then he comes back to um, the UK and he gets Child Harold, pu Child Harold published and he is famous and um, we get to see great adoration for him, a lot of love for him there and then uh, over the film we see his various encounters with various women and his marriage um, which works and fails on both levels and then he goes away and then well, I'm not going, well, yes I will, I will say that it does go right up to his death. I did, we had about 15 minutes till the end and I was sitting thinking, this really can't, there's not enough time for him to die left really. But no, it does take us right up to his death, but obviously I'm not going to tell you how it dies, just in case you do want to watch this, um, did I just say how it dies? Oops. How he dies, I'm not going to tell you how Byron dies, just in case you don't actually know that and you want to watch this to learn more and it will spoil the ending. Um, but to me, it is more like watching a documentary than it is watching a film. I watch it for information rather than for pleasure, although it is highly pleasurable, I will say that right now. But I do watch it more as a documentary purpose than a, you know, a film I'd go and see in the cinema or something. Um, as far as being true to his actual life, to what I know, I'm not an expert by any means, but I've read, okay, I've read about six or seven books or something, not a great deal. But from what I know, um, a lot of what was said is true. The only thing, I, the biggest significant thing that I think they missed out, um, from what I've read, now I'm saying from what I've read, because I've read two or three books that focus on this, that could not be true. You know, various books use counter sources, and those counter sources can lie. But to my knowledge, he fled England primarily because of Glenarvan. Um, Lady Carroll published Glenarvan, totally ruined his career. Uh, well, he was still successful, but it kind of ruined people's perception of him and he, he got away, you know, there were other factors incorporated into that. But Glenarvan was never mentioned in this, not once, which I think was a key thing missing in this, because there was a lot of focus on Lady Carol's sort of craziness. Um, I will talk about a specific Carol scene in a moment, um, which I loved. But I thought that was quite something significant that they didn't mention. But other than that, I think most of the key things... Also, yeah, they didn't really mention that much of his poetry. There was obviously heavy focus that he was a poet, and his various actions came about because of his love of poetry and the fact that he was a writer. Um, but we didn't hear much of the poetry. The only one that was really talked about by name was Child Harold. Um, nothing else was really mentioned. There was th no sightings of his other poetry. You know, because I was watching it thinking, oh, I wonder which poems are going to get mentioned. I wonder which ones will be read out loud. Not so much of that going on, really, which I was a little bit disappointed about. But it was still very exciting. Um, so I've sort of written down some of my sort of... Um, like key moments and things that I absolutely loved. First of all, there was a fox in his room. Um, that was highly entertaining, to be honest with you. I was like, okay, there's a fox. There's this whole thing about he kept a bear at his university room and things. But there was just this gorgeous little real, I assume it was real, fox sitting in a chair, and that made my day. Um, there was also a particular scene which I found quite striking. Um, sort of unexpected, not sort of aghast by it, but sort of really kind of, whoa, what the hell? There's a particular scene where he's writing, and there's this naked woman, a lot of nudity in this, by the way, um, a lot of sex as well. Naked woman, but that's Byron for you, I'm, my mind's all over, the, all over the place right now. Naked woman standing right next to him, we only see her from behind. And he's writing, and then he just stops, looks, holds up a pair of scissors. I'm not going to tell you what he does next, but I was like, alright? And that's actually explained later on in the film. I don't know if that bit was true, um, part of me hopes it isn't. But at the same time, I wouldn't be shocked if it was. You know, Byron was a bit of a 
a little bit of a nut job, but not on the levels of Caro, but more of a, more in the case of not quite normal. Um, menus of Siam, which is great, I live right next to Siam. Um, you have the wedding, um, of course, to Annabella Milbank. The character of Annabella in this was not what I thought she was going to be, so I, I don't know whether that's what she's really like, but I hope she wasn't. She seems a bit too whiny, to be honest. At one point she's sitting back and letting all the crap in her life sort of just pile up on her and then the next moment she's complaining about every little thing and I'm like shut up so I don't know whether I and that's not how I perceive her to be but regardless it was quite an interesting character I've written a list of all the characters in it anyway I'll talk about that in a moment um they're also yes this is a very vital point that I want to make if you know nothing about Byron and I mean nothing and you're just watching this for because somebody like me is making you watch it which I am going to make you all watch it by the way there are a few things in it which you will only understand if you know about Byron. Um, for example, there is somebody mentions something, and you have a limp. And he also, when um, when Ada is born, when you know, basically the, right after she's born, um, the nurse or whatever takes over the baby to Byron, and he says, "Let me see her feet, or show me her feet, or something." And he looks at, under the blanket, looks at her feet, and he goes, "They're perfect." And now, if you didn't know that Byron had club foot, well, one. Um, you're not going to understand that reference really. So there are certain elements in this where you have to know a little bit about Byron to be able to relate to them. Because if I didn't know that, I would have been like, why has he got a foot obsession or something? So there are certain elements of this where you do need to kind of know a little bit, but not a massive amount. So it's not really a problem if you don't know anything about Byron, but I definitely think it's targeted at Byromaniacs and people who know a little bit about Byron in general, you know. Um, so that's that's not really a massive problem. Also, we have a lot about Allegra in there towards the end as well, but not to the extent that I thought it was going to be. Um, Allegra is Claire's child, Claire Clermont. By the way, Clermont is pronounced in three different ways in this. It's really peculiar. I can't really... Claire, Claire, the, the, um, the emphasis is on the way I say it, Clermont. Um, somebody says Claire Clermont with the emphasis on Claire. And there's another way, but I can't remember, but I just found it quite fascinating that in one film, one surname is pronounced three ways. Really weird. Um, Okay, so we have a list of characters here, which I thought was really exciting to have in here. Um, John Murray was in it, who was like the best publisher from the early 1800s. He published Austen's books as well, and a couple of other famous names. Um, Lady Melbourne, of course, character in this I found very annoying, but very enjoyable to watch. Milbank, of course, and Lady Carroll. Lady Carroll, there's one scene where Byron basically tells her to... I'll keep my language mild on this, but he basically says, go away, but in a bit bit stronger and she has the biggest hissy fit in the world I'm like I wasn't expecting that it really makes the character well it, it makes Lady Caroline seem a lot more insane than what I personally felt she was so I don't know whether I want to look at her at that level of insanity but then that's what I'm saying so they didn't go on and talk about Glenarvan which I thought was a really big substantial thing there to bring Carol back because towards the end she kind of fizzled away and wasn't that vital in it um so I thought they missed a trip there but never mind um Augusta Lee, of course, she played a vital role in this, a lot more so than what I believed her to be from what I've read as well, um, in the sort of the destroying of Byron's marriage with Milbank there. Shelley was in this, um, played by Oliver Dimsdale. Oh, wow. I've never been attracted to Shelley before in my life, but in this, oh my goodness, he's more gorgeous than, than that. Um, he doesn't much look like Byron there, Johnny Lee Miller, is that his name? Yes, it is. I knew I'd question that. Um, but if you look at him there, after he's curled his hair, he does actually look a lot more like Byron there. And you have um, Annabella Milbank there and Augusta there. Um, but Shelley, there isn't actually a picture of Shelley on this. But wow, you know, I've never seen a picture of Shelley and thought, oof. But I saw him in this as Dimsdale and I was like, wow, yes, please. Um, so I was quite pleased by that. Um, Mary... Mary is in this as well, Mary Shelley, Mary Godwin, but not, I don't even think she was ever named, to be honest with you. You had to take for granted that that was who she was, I don't think she was ever named, which is really weird. Um, but yeah, so I've talked about this for quite a lot, I knew I would. I loved this, every aspect of it. I watched the first part, then went and, uh, what did I do, I did something else in between, then watched the second part, so I basically watched it straight off, and I love it so, so, so much. Thank you so much to Emily for buying me this and at least you know even if she just told me about it I would have been gobsmacked that it existed I love it so so much and uh, the disc also is you know very dark and very very alluring very nice but it is it is very good as I said a lot of the facts in this 
or two it is a very good way to sort of recap your knowledge as I said a few things in here which are if I say as I said one more time I'm going to hit myself um, a lot of the things in this are you know you do have to know a little bit about Byron to be able to connect with it but it's not essential to be able to watch it I don't think obviously that is a big thing for me to claim considering I'm not in that position I, I do know a little bit about Byron but it was beautiful absolutely beautiful from start to finish best two and a half hours of my life sensationally love it do go and check it out this is on Amazon couple of pounds not overly expensive go and buy it you will love it I promise you and if you don't know who Byron is head to Wikipedia most of the stuff on Wikipedia from what I've read about Byron is fairly true head to there recap by watching this you will love it promise you please let me know your thoughts and I'll see you all next time bye